What are your takes on the equity of the strength in the equity markets over the last week, week and a half? We actually see a lot of you know underlying strength uh, in the fundamentals of the market and the economy. I mean, big picture, you know, we we see inflation starting to moderate later and cool throughout this year. Uh, we have a really, really tight labor market. And, you know, we have American consumers that have like an extra two trillion dollars in cash um, that want to psychologically get out from the pandemic and get out there spending. And as we know, markets are a slave to earnings. So that that consumer spending that we're expecting is ultimately going to drive markets higher in our view. Now, if you look at some of the consumer sentiment data and the consumer confidence data, that's been waning a little bit, Aaron. Is that a concern for you moving forward? Because those are forward-looking data points that maybe haven't reached the equity market yet. And we all know, uh, you know, stocks are, and the economy are based on consumer spending. Do you see that starting to crack anytime soon? No, it's interesting. Uh, the AAIA sentiment for bullishness is actually, I think, at a 17-week low, or it's been below historical averages for 17 weeks in a row. Um, we see that as kind of a contrarian bullish sign, actually. Um, so I don't think that that negative sentiment is going to creep up. I really see it going the other way, um, just with the underlying fundamentals that we're seeing out there in the market. I mean, you know, S&P corporate uh, profits are slated to rise. Buybacks are increasing. Dividend payouts are increasing. Um, and as I said, you know, the American consumer has so much cash on the sidelines and really psychologically just coming out of the pandemic, I think, wants to get out there and spend. Um, this inflation and gas prices and those sort of things, I think, is definitely weighing on sentiment. But we should start to see those things cool later in the year. The resurgence of the NASDAQ, uh, Aaron, I kind of wanted to hit on that. It's been leading, uh, you know, but then again, it was in bear market territory, still in bear market territory uh, because we haven't bounced off of those lows. But the resurgence there, is that the lift that the market needs to continue to move higher or at least consolidate at these levels despite the risks that we're seeing in the headlines? Yeah, I mean, I think historically, if you look when the NASDAQ's gone up 2.5% two days in a row, which it did last week, uh, the median return over the next 12 months, I think, was about 3.5%. So I do see that going higher. But we actually like more value in cyclical names to continue outperforming this year, as opposed to some of the growth in tech names that you'll see on the NASDAQ. Um, just given what we're seeing with higher interest rates um, and inflation, I think that's going to weigh down on you know the value of those future cash flows, which, which so many of the growth companies are really dependent on. Another sector uh, that's done pretty well, we've got the rising interest rate environment, but the yield curve contracting here a little bit is financials. Uh, where do you see this going as, um, you know, consumer demand for loans starting to pick up a little bit, but you've got housing prices that are elevated, uh, but in a rising interest rate environment, historically, the financials do pretty well. Exactly. Yeah. So I see a lot of tailwinds for financials going through the end of the year. As you mentioned, uh, we're having rising interest rates. We think inflation is going to start to moderate. And we really have this accelerating uh, global economic recovery and reopening. So all those things, I think, are ultimately tailwinds for this year for financials. They're also trading at a relative discount to the broader market. Uh, so it's definitely an area that we like right now.